All right, so the airplane's outside. We have a GPS lock now. Uh, you can see it's just been sitting for a couple of minutes, or about two and a half minutes now. We have seven satellites, or eight satellites now. It's been sitting there like that for, I don't know, about a minute and a half to get a lock. So we're gonna go ahead and arm it, and get it in the air, and do a quick auto-tune, and uh, make sure it still flies good. So let's get on with that now. All right, so we are flying. We're in the air now. Um, I'm not sure how well it came through in the video, but when I launched the airplane, it dipped down pretty low, even though I launched in angle mode with a bit of up trim in my radio for a little bit of a climb. Uh, basically, my servos are not trimmed because this is a new install, and uh, luckily it was enough it didn't hit the ground, but... It's just kind of something to be aware of. I probably should have launched with a little bit of nose up altitude or attitude. That's just something I wasn't really thinking about being that I've flown the airplane a number of times before this, but it would have been trimmed at that time as well. So everything actually feels really good before the even, even doing the tune. So what I'm doing, I'm basically flying right now in, uh, in cruise mode just to give it time to trim the servos that's why i'm just kind of flying hands off right now letting it fly straight and level and you can see my uh feet per second climb down there is pretty much locked in right where it needs to be and the airplane is doing its thing so i'm gonna go ahead and point it back home just so that we don't get too far out So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to angle mode. Angle mode. And it's still flying pretty well right where we need it to be. There's a little bit of a left turn going on here. It could be the drag from my antenna. Or it could be a wind thing going on or something. And the airplane feels pretty good. Let me switch back to acro. Acro mode. Yeah, it still feels pretty well trimmed right where it needs to be. I'm gonna adjust my throttle closer to where I would want it to be while I'm flying. So it is kind of dipping to the right and slowly dropping the nose a little bit in acro. Pull the nose back and level the wings and release it. And if anything, now it's pulling the nose up, but we still have a slight right roll. So go back to cruise. Everything feels really good. I think the airplane is trimmed already. Feels like it's already got everything trimmed and the auto level is tuned where it needs to be to hold altitude. Feels really good in cruise. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start an auto-tune now. So what we'll do is we'll go back to acro, acro mode. and we'll switch on auto-tune. Auto -tune. So now what we want to do with auto-tune is just start doing some full pitch movements. Now notice I'm just doing the pitch axis here. And when I do that, I notice the airplane is rolling a bit. There's a bit of roll mixed. I pull up, it rolls left. I pull, push down, it rolls right. I'm just kind of noticing that. And I'm not touching the roll. 
Well, other than now, just to level the wings back out and get back on course. But yeah, you can see here I pull up and it rolls left. Push down, it rolls right. Maybe when we tune the roll axis, it'll take that out. I'm just kind of banging the sticks right now. Just to auto-tune the pitch axis. And you'll take note I'm doing this at about 45% throttle, which is close to where it cruises. Actually, let me push that up closer to about 48, 49. Let's do 48% throttle. That's kind of where it tends to cruise doing its auto throttle thing. And we're still just banging that pitch axis front and back. Alright, so let's start doing some roll now. Gain a little bit of altitude, get back up here. I'm kind of noticing my elevator feels kind of anemic. This is full back stick right now, it won't even let me hold the nose up. I'm still holding full back and it'll kind of settle. Although I guess we are losing altitude too, that's probably what's going on. Or uh, airspeed rather. So let's go ahead and finish tuning the roll axis while we have some altitude. Yeah, the roll is becoming a lot more responsive now, as it should, as you would expect. I notice it's not holding the nose up now, it wants to drop the nose a bit. So there we go. I guess we're just, it kind of almost feels like it wants more airspeed, but I know the low airplane will fly with less throttle than this. Yeah, my pitch feels a little weak, a little soft. As I'm banging the pitch stick right now, I do still feel some of that roll going on. Although it's not as pronounced as it was before. There's a little bit of roll coupled to the pitch. Just kind of watching the altitude here, getting kind of low. All right, so we're going to switch back out of auto-tune. And everything feels pretty good right now. Especially the roll, the roll axis feels really good. Switch to angle. A little bit of uh, yaw wag going on there, kind of rocking the nose left and right, as most wings do. Video's a little sketchy as I'm flying off the side of my antennas there. Everything feels good though, it's holding altitude really well. Now this is totally hands off right now. Um, I basically have the nose pointed at that shed out there. That's kind of right in the little AHI center marker there. And I've not touched the stick, the, uh, stick since I said I was hands off. And I think I was at like 75 feet altitude when I said that and we're sitting on 77 right now which is not changing at all. And I just want to see if it'll hold a course to that shed over some distance. Now we're at 78 feet, 77. So it's managing altitude quite well and we're still deadlocked on that shed other than a little bit of yaw wag. But we're headed right for it. We're going to miss it a little bit to the right.
And we're down to 76 feet altitude now. So yeah, we're we're pretty well deadlocked where we want to be. So that all went pretty good with the exception of the yaw or the pitch axis. It's a little bit anemic on pitch. Now this is full back stick right now for a climb. We're hovering right around 10 feet per second climb, which I have no idea if that's defaults or whatever. How that's all set up. Now I've released the stick and we'll see if it levels off. We were at about 222 feet when I said that. But we're going to release the stick anyway. It actually seems to be settling closer to about 200, 208, 209, 210, 211. It may settle back where it wants to be, where we want it to be, rather. Um. Yeah, this feels really good now. So I'm actually going to push the nose down and lose a bit of altitude. And we're going to start, so actually we're not going to start a mission because I didn't load it from the EPRON. Uh, or from the flight controller. But we do have a mission that I uploaded that just runs a two mile test out here. So I'm actually going to go back to angle mode and land and save these settings using the stick commands just to make sure that auto-tune gets saved. And we'll load that mission and we'll go back up and fly it, I think. Angle mode. So let's go back to angle mode. Just start uh, losing some altitude, getting lined up on the runway. Until we're over the threshold and we'll cut power now and let it start descending and fire. And there's our landing. As you can see, the camera rebooted. I guess that connector's loose. We we'll probably need to check that. So before we disarm, or actually we are going to disarm because we need to use the throttle to enter the OSD menu. Disarmed. So we're going to disarm. There's our summary screen if you want to look at any of that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to enter the OSD menu. We're going to we're going to save and reboot. And we've just lost video because of the uh, auto power thing in VTX. They dropped it back to low power because we're just on it. So I'm gonna stop this recording. We'll get the airplane and we'll, well, there's video kind of coming back now. Maybe we'll just leave it sitting out there with weak video and we'll go back into the menu here. And I think it's in miscellaneous. No, it's not. I don't remember where to load a mission. Features maybe? Navigation. Missions. Huh. I don't remember where to load a mission from in here. I mean, I could set it to... to load a mission on boot. I didn't even know that was an option. I was pretty sure there was a way to load a mission without using a stick command. You could do it from the menu, but maybe I'm wrong on that. So what I'm actually going to do is go and switch that on.
Load a mission on boot. We're going to set that to on. And we're going to save and reboot. Now you notice the, the uh, mission loaded message on screen there. So the mission is loaded. So now that when we arm and fly it, it should uh, fly a mission. So I'm going to arm now. Mission one with eight waypoints. That sounds good. So I'm going to run out and get the airplane, launch it and come back in. I'll be right back. All right, so we've launched and we're back in the air. Uh, took a few minutes, had to dry the airplane off. Everything was wet from the wet grass outside. So I'm flying this early in the morning, mostly just to uh, beat the wind. So I wanted it to be relatively calm when I launched or when I tuned the airplane. Um, but you can see everything's flying pretty good right now, but everything is soaking wet out there from, from the dew. Got to make for an interesting launch once again, which still wasn't as bad as the first one. But the airplane was wet and it kind of slipped out of my hand when I threw it. Uh, but yeah, we should be good to go to run this mission, so we're going to do that now. We're going to go to waypoint mode. Waypoint. And we're on the way to waypoint 1 of 8. So basically this waypoint is the one, the same mission I've flown in earlier versions of iNav. It's an old mission file that I saved. Um, it's going to, see it just switched to number eight. There was one waypoint set on that little roadway that we just crossed over. And if you look straight ahead right now, kind of in the middle of the screen, a little bit below the AHI, there's a split in that field, kind of lighter color to the left and darker color to the right. We're flying over a field of corn right now, and that's some grass that they grow for different stuff for erosion control, and I think they bail some of it or whatever. But that kind of split in that field, we're heading right for the close, the, the near corner of that light colored field is one waypoint. And then the next waypoint is straight down the edge of that field, so we should turn a little bit to the left and follow that divide there. Okay, so we just hit waypoint two. No, waypoint three should be at the far end of that field, right along that little divide between the two. You see we are crossing that just fine. And these waypoints are set at 250 feet. I know that for a fact. And it is uh, managing that altitude quite well. Now the next waypoint should be at the corner of those woods, straight ahead. And by the way, while we're uh, watching the airplane do its thing, flying this mission, um, how does my audio sound? To me it sounds a lot better now. I spent more time than I should probably trying to uh, fix all that stuff after that last long video uh, after I recorded it and I played it back the audio sounded terrible um, but it should sound a lot better now so yeah we're nearing waypoint number four now we just triggered four so we're on the way to five which is again at the far corner you can see kind of straight ahead we're 
the small trees in and the big trees start. Kind of that little inside corner on the tall wooded area there. But yeah, hopefully my audio sounds a lot better than it did after that last video because I was really disappointed in that. But I wasn't going to re-record that hour plus long video just for the audio. I thought about maybe redoing a voiceover, but it was it was more authentic just leaving the audio that I recorded in real time. So that's why the audio sucks in the last one. Alright, so we're nearing that that corner of the woods right now and the next waypoint is going to be a right hand turn a 90 degree turn to the right as soon as we trigger this one so now that's our turn to the right and it's basically going to fly straight south I don't remember if it goes all the way to that field straight ahead or not but it's basically going to fly directly south here a ways and then it's going to do another right hand turn 90 degrees to the right, which will start its way back home. And yeah, we're about to trigger it now. So we didn't go all the way to the field. I didn't think so, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, now this one should fly straight west a ways. Apparently nine-tenths of a mile from where we are right now. I didn't remember how far it was, but you can see that on the screen. We're on the way to waypoint seven of eight, which is that distance away. And then when it reaches that one, I think the last waypoint, they're calling it a waypoint. I think that was just a return to launch. So we'll be able to see how return to launch handles everything as well. Because I do have a uh, safe point set up, which is directly south of where I arm. It's, it's just something I like to do because if I return to launch directly back to where I arm and it circles that arming location, then that uh, usually ends up with the airplane. Well, it always ends up with the airplane loitering overhead, which puts half of that loiter radius into the tall trees and the bayou and stuff like that that's right in front of our house. So if I ever found myself in a situation where the airplane had to fly itself home, and was going to loiter overhead until it uh, lands. What is that, a bird? I just saw a white bird fly over, over the airplane there. Um, but yeah, if it loiters that home position until the battery runs down and it, it starts landing on its own, because it do have auto land feature or whatever set to never, so it's just going to loiter that position. Hopefully give me a chance to fix any problems on the ground so that I can land the airplane my way. Uh, but if not, it'll eventually land on its own anyway when this, the battery gets too weak for it to maintain altitude. Um, so yeah, you can see we've reached that waypoint now. So we're returning home and you notice the message on the screen is diverting to safe home. And my return home altitude is, I think, 300 feet. Yeah, it's going to settle right around 300 on its way back home but we are going to slowly descend because i do have a linear descent feature set or maybe it'll hold 300 until it gets close enough to trigger that home altitude which will start descending a bit uh, but anyway what i was saying about the safe home i have my safe home set just south of where i arm it's just a point on the map that i picked this where it, it puts my radius my loiter radius further out so that I'll have a better chance to recover the airplane with minimal damage. It won't end up in the bayou or in the top of a tree somewhere where it'll be more difficult to recover. It'll just loiter that point, which is, you can see that's home coming up there. And my safe home is just a point out in the field south of home where we're headed to right now. So it'll loiter out over this flat open area. And if it should ever land out there, I can just walk out there and pick the airplane up. Or the pieces, depending on how hard it hits the ground. <laughs> but I just wanted to explain that why it's not going to directly go back to the point where we arm and launch. It's going to go to the safe home. We'll just leave it in waypoint. You can see it's kind of doing its little left hand turn now so they can start loitering that waypoint. And I just want to see if it does drop the altitude, because I do have my home altitude set to, I think, 150 feet, if I remember. And yeah, you can see we're loitering around safe home now. 
and it definitely is pushing the nose down and dropping altitude. So it should start to level off here pretty soon. Even though it's set for 150 feet, you see we got down to like 125 or so. Now it's going to climb back up to hold that 150. So yeah, it does kind of dip down below its target a bit, but it recovers quickly. Uh, that's just something to note, which, I mean, you should always have a little margin for error anyway. But I'm kind of curious. I'm going to let it loiter for a minute. Um, I just want to see how it manages its altitude and everything. I'm curious if it's going to uh, lose altitude with the, the whole horizon drift thing that iNav is somewhat famous for. Some say unjustifiably, some would argue otherwise, but personally I've never had a big issue with iNav drift, or horizon drift with iNav after they added some methods to mitigate that. Although we are losing altitude now and that's kind of the big issue with it. And there's another one of those birds and he was just kind of dive bombing my airplane. Uh, so yeah, my altitude is starting to porpoise quite a bit, so I'm going to go ahead and set this back to cruise after we finish turning back out in the direction I want to fly. Angle mode. It's actually angle mode, but that's fine. Good enough. So yeah, we do have a little bit of drift going on. Um... I'm having to hold a little bit of left aileron right now just to pull the airplane level and hopefully it's going to settle back down. Which it is slowly leveling back out. So I guess there is still a little bit of drift going on. Now there is a couple of parameters you can change in the CLI to help with that, but I was kind of hoping the defaults would be ideal. And yeah, we're pretty well back level now. Let me go back to cruise. cruise mode. I want to kind of fly our back around back here and see if I see any of those birds again. Because they're kind of fun to play with when they they decide they want to chase you and, and fly at you like that. They're kind of fun to play with sometimes. Um, but we do need to keep an eye on the battery voltage because my melee power counter likely reset when I reboot the flight controller. In fact, I'm pretty sure it did. Um, so we can't really depend on that for an accurate uh, quote-unquote fuel gauge, but we will watch the battery voltage. And we're not really going to fly very far from home anyway. Um, so another thing I can do to play around with that uh, horizon drift. I can get out here in angle mode. Or maybe we'll even do it in acro mode. We'll just start a turn and pull the nose up. And I am having to correct quite a bit. Acro is not really... I mean, I'm just doing a little minor minor pitch corrections here. And the main, the thing with the, the horizon drift is when you would do a slow turn like this, the horizon would usually dip down below the actual horizon. The artificial horizon would, would kind of push down to the bottom of the screen. And the airplane would think it was climbing all the time. So it would push the nose down to compensate. And you would end up losing altitude and could possibly in eventually drive the airplane into the ground. But it doesn't seem to be an issue here. So honestly, that little bit of porpoising in the altitude may not be an issue with Horizon Drift at all. It could just be something I need to tune with the uh, altitude hole stuff in navigation settings. So let's start a right-hand turn. And what we want to do is just do a slow sweeping turn along the horizon here. 
and see if it'll eventually push the AHI down below the actual real horizon. Everything seems pretty good to me. So yeah, that, that weird stuff going on with the uh, altitude while I was loitering the safe home position, I don't think that was an AHI problem. I think that was more something else in my uh, fixed wing navigation stuff that I might be able to tune out of it. We'll revisit that later though. I may even uh, ask for some more input from Darren and Mark because I really do trust those guys judgment and knowledge with this stuff. So yeah, you can see our altitude, our AHI is a little bit low, but definitely nothing unmanageable. So go back to cruise. Cruise mode. And everything still feels great. So we're pretty well ready to go with uh, I-95 here and uh, everything checks out, tuned up well, flying well. And like I said, I'll ask about that uh, pitch, os not necessarily a pitch oscillation, it was more in the uh, altitude. Um, but yeah, I guess in the interest of keeping this video uh, duration manageable, there I was going to say I was going to go home and fly, but there's that bird we were looking for. Let's see if we can get on a six, chase him down. We're probably going to outrun him, yeah, and he's going to turn to get away from us and if I had to guess he's probably long gone by now oh there he is way down below I go to Acro Acro mode. so we have a little bit more uh, control authority to try to chase him down yeah he's he's just gonna stay away from us keep us from catching him cruise mode. so yeah we'll cruise back home and set up a nice landing and in the video here and I guess if there's anything to follow up on later as far as the altitude thing I'll probably do another video on that or check any comments below because uh, like I said in the last one any replies to that I will end up pinning those comments so I would like to thank you for watching the video and to all the people that support the channel be it patreon pledges or channel members or donations using the thanks feature like i've got a couple of those now from jonesing for fish or jonesing for fish um i'm greatly thankful for that but we'll see if we can get a smoother landing this time and there we go a little bit better that time so we'll go ahead and disarm Disarmed. and we'll look at the summary screen here while we end the video and i'll thank you for watching it once again thank you for all the support for the channel and keep an eye out for what's to come in the future not sure where we'll go from here but it'll probably be something fun so stay tuned for that and i'll see you all in the next one